Hi everybody, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here to give an update on my health and the new chapter in my story with the endoscopy results from previously. Uh, thank you everybody for being here. I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet because there's a lot going on and uh, once you hear this whole thing, you're going to be like, what the F? So, let's start with the endoscopy results. Uh, I'm going to read them to you like I did with the colonoscopy polyp biopsy results. So, let's start here what they found. My Z line was irregular. My, um, as she did a biopsy, uh, a biopsy of the duodenal bulb and second portion of the duodenum were normal. Um, the duodenal bulb and second portion of the duodenum were normal. That's your small intestine, like where it begins. She did biopsies anyway on those areas. I had um, some um, gastritis that was biopsied, my stomach, um, and I had one three millimeter sessile polyp with no bleeding and the polyp was removed and biopsied, okay? Here is a, can you see it? It's not going to show. It's my little photos. Uh, that's my polyp right there. Top photo. This is my esophagus. Oh no, that's duodenum. This is the duodenum. Um, here's my esophagus. Let's see. Okay, the bottom, the lower third of my esophagus, okay? I had these areas biopsy. Now, I'm going to go through what the biopsy results were. One, the biopsy of the duodenum and um, the small bowel, small intestine. Negative for celiac disease, negative for parasites, negative for Whipple's disease, and negative for duodenitis, which is inflammation of the duodenum. The gastritis biopsy um, it came back as chronic gastritis mild, negative for H. pylori, intestinal, meta, intestinal metaplasia, which would be the beginning step, steps of cancer cells, and negative for dysplasia. Um, the polyp was negative for H. pylori, intestinal metaplasia, adenoma, and malignancy. My esophagus was biopsied. It, I have um, mild reflux, esophagitis, esophagitis, esophagitis. It was negative for Barrett's esophagus, fungi, eosinophilic, esophagitis, 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 uh, viral inclusions, and dysplasia. So basically, the results here are, as my doctor explained it, I saw her on Friday evening. I have mild, very, she said it was very mild, um, silent reflux, because I have no symptoms. And uh, I eat cheese, I eat spicy stuff, I eat tomatoes, I eat very acidic foods, I have no issues. I've never had heartburn, I've never had throat issues, I've never had like feeling like acid was coming up through my throat. So, I have mild reflux and I'm gonna be on like a three week course of Prilosec and she said it should clear up by then. I also stopped taking my vitamins, my daily multivitamin, the 2000 additional um, D and then I have stopped taking the 2500 micrograms of vitamin B12 and my stomach is like the bloating has really mostly stopped and also the stomach pain has stopped. Was it my vitamins? I don't know because that's not how it started. That's not how last year this whole thing started. 
it's a long story. Please go back into the other videos. I don't want to have to keep explaining to everybody, uh, even though if you're catching this video and you haven't seen the other ones, whatever symptoms you think that I may have had, I probably had, and whatever things you think I should be checked for, I've probably already been checked for. Um, but I guess the end endoscopy is a little bit more um, concrete in the way that they check for H. pylori and celiac disease because I had the blood test and the breath test for that. The, I did the urea breath test for H. pylori, it was negative. I did a whole celiac panel blood work and that was all normal, I didn't have celiac disease. I have been tested for the, I've said this before with the B12, I'm not anemic. Um, I don't have low iron, it was just B12. I do not have pernicious anemia. I was tested for that, for the intrinsic, intrinsic factor issues. Um, they still don't know what my bloating is. I'm going on February 20th to get tested for SIBO, small uh, intestine bacteria overgrowth, although my doctor seems to think, she's, she's like, just do it anyways, but you probably don't need it. it so here I am, okay? Now. I just want to back up for a minute because um, things have come to light that are very upsetting. In my previous videos, the first two I wrote about like health update, um, cancer and all of that, please understand, and I may even take those, make those videos private now because I, I don't, I'm going to explain to you the situation. On December 23rd, my doctor, my old doctor, that took this polyp out of my... Okay, let's back up if you're just watching this and you haven't seen any of my other videos. In November, I had a colonoscopy because I had the symptoms. I don't want to keep rehashing all the symptoms. They're in another video. And it turned out I had a rectal polyp. It was pretty big. They took it out. They biopsied it. I found out on December 23rd, I was told that it had cancerous changes, that it was a cancerous polyp, that it has been removed, and that I should follow up in three months to get another colonoscopy to make sure it didn't grow back, and that it was, uh, I asked the doctor, well, what kind of cancer is it? And he said, it's cancer. I'm like, right, but what kind of cancer? He said, it's colon cancer. I'm like, okay. That was December 23rd. From December 23rd until I followed up with him on January 3rd was a whole two weeks of mind fuckery that messed up my whole holiday. I wasn't explained anything about the cancer. I was told, uh, I was left with a lot of questions. I have family and, and friends who've had cancer. I have a lot of cancer in my family. Um, I was disturbed. I have an MSH6 variant that may cause Lynch syndrome. I may have that. I may not. Um, my new doctor is just... I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, so I was nervous and... Um, I, all these things were going through my mind about like, oh, could it have spread? Did, did he really get it all? Uh, I, I don't know what this means. And I posted some videos about it in that, in that time period and I was really scared. And then on January 3rd, I found out that from this, I went into this doctor, I walked, he, he walked in and said, have I seen you before? Right away, I was like, that's fucked up. Uh, and then he showed me, he's like, oh, I remember he took out, he showed me the photo of the polyp. He showed me the photo and on the photo, he showed me where he cut and where the cancerous cells were found. The high grade dysplasia. I've read out that whole pathology report in another video. He told me that it, that he, that it didn't cut. He didn't cut where the cancer was. He told me that here's where he cut. And on the other side of that is where the cancerous cells were, the high-grade dysplasia, but they didn't go beneath the surface of the polyp, and he caught it just in time. These are his words. This is what I was told. And so, that's where it stood. And I said, well, what does that mean? Uh, is this like grade, like what grade is it? Is it grade zero? And he's like, yeah, it would be grade zero. I'm like, okay, 
I've been very forthcoming with all of this. And by the way, in another video, just to make a little segue here, I had explained what I experienced with my colonoscopy. Okay, on my discharge papers for my colonoscopy, it does say that you may have some streaks of blood in your poop. Look, I <laughs> somebody wrote a comment that I deleted because it was ridiculous. Um, uh, I'm not going to be I'm not going to be gaslighted by people in the comments section. About everybody, mostly everybody's been great. There's only been like two comments that I had to delete or not approve or whatever. But look, I had a, a large polyp taken out of my ass, okay, out of my rectum, and there was bleeding for a while out of my butt. Not a lot, but it was it. There was blood on the toilet paper. There was blood there. It was, there was some blood in my poops. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not looking to sugarcoat anything here. I'm explaining my whole experience. And the, my doctor's office, I had called and they told me that was normal. So, so if, you know, I don't know what to say about that, but somebody had suggested that, um, that like I, I was gonna, I was scaring people off from getting a colonoscopy and a bunch of other convoluted bullshit. I just wanted to, um, <laughs> say something about that. But, um, you, you know, I've been through a lot now with doctors and um, this is why I'm sharing this information because, like I said a kabillion times, you really have to be your own advocate. I have finally found a doctor that I trust and I'm going to explain to you why. When I went to follow up for my endoscopy stuff on Friday, she said, I want to talk to you first because by this time now, this new doctor has gotten my entire file from the last uh, gastroenterologist. She's got my entire file from my um, primary doctor and my entire file from both of my OBGYNs so she can see everything. And I gave her everything because I wanted her to know the whole f picture because I'm tired of having this bloating and feeling uncomfortable and I want somebody to, to help me solve what the F is going on. Because for me, I ignore things and ignore things and ignore things and just think that my body as a licensed massage therapist and more on the holistic end of things I just try to support my immune system um, with you know good nutrition and taking care of myself and managing my stress levels and and I know all about that by the way and um, what what's happening here um, and managing my managing my stress levels and and trying to do things naturally so for the most part I don't like to take medications I don't I don't like to go to I don't like to go to the doctor I don't I'm not the type of person I'm not the type of person who will run to a doctor for everything I try to let my body heal itself on its own so I've already, for the past however many years, have been putting off these symptoms that I've had, going to the bathroom and the bleeding and whatnot, and I've kind of been ignoring it and, and thinking it's just endometriosis because I have that and I know, you know, um, so this past year I stopped ignoring my symptoms and I've been trying to figure out what it is because I know that something's not right. So anyway, are, are we serious with this hair? Um, whatever. So anyway, I, this is annoying me. So, oh my God. One moment. This is ridiculous. Let's just bring it back to here because I can't even deal. Um, I, I, I know I'm a little bit, ooh, but I'm, I'm really upset because and I thank everybody for being there and for giving me your suggestions and everything. I, I really do appreciate that. This has been really awesome. And I, okay, let me, when I went to the doctor yesterday and, um, she had now at this point she had everything and she had the last time I had spoke to her and went in to see her before she was like, we got to get you in for an endoscopy right away. 
she was like, uh, I want to get the doctor's notes from what he did when he took out this uh, polyp. I want to see what, he, what it says, because if I was just looking at this polyp and pathology report, I would be like, okay, yeah, come back in a year and we'll follow up on it. But since he told you three months and then he told you six months, I want to see why that is. So when I went in on Friday, she had all of his notes. I'm like, by the way, how are his notes? And she's like, they're not good. I mean, they're not, they're not really that great notes. So, you know, and I'm, I'm starting to have issues going to the bathroom, I'm starting to have like little pain when I, when I poop. So she's like, okay, I'm glad that you mentioned that because when I'm reading this, you took, when I'm reading this pathology report, when, you know, you're telling me that he said he took everything out, but the high grade dysplasia, which is where the cells start turning funky, which is like right before it turns to cancer, right? She's like, these are abnormal cells in there. And then your body's reproducing the cells. And she li she gave me a really great analogy. She likened it to cupcakes. When you first bake bake one batch of cupcakes, there you have the time. You're you're the, everything's nice and orderly, and they look beautiful and stuff. But if you have to bake 400 cupcakes, by the time you get to the the last batch of cupcakes, things are going to start to go awry. And then if you have to bake 10,000 cupcakes, by the end of it, they're, they're not even going to look like cupcakes. And that's how she explained how a polyp goes from a healthy tissue to cancer. So, like, I'm at the 400 level, right? That's how she said it. Like, things are starting to look funky. And it's not yet cancer, but it's on its way to cancer. The high grade dysplasia is on its way to cancer. So it's not real. So I'm like, so what is that then? It's not really grade zero. She's like, no. So that doctor, okay. Then she tells me, and actually he cut through the high grade dysplasia and when he took off the polyp, as according to this pathology report, he cut through it. So he didn't remove, usually when they do that, they remove other tissue around it and you go into, you find the healthy tissue and that's how it's done. That's not what this doctor did. And he, I'm like, but he specifically told me and showed me the photo of where he cut and where the cells were on the other side. So there's no way that these cells could have spread anywhere. Uh, and she said, that's not what the pathology report says. I'm like, well, that's bullshit. And she's like, actually, it is bullshit. So I was lied to by this doctor, not in that one case, okay? I was lied about it's colon cancer, when it, maybe it's not really colon cancer. These are just abnormal cells on their way to colon cancer. And, and I'm just, I can't, I can't tell you how devastating it is to be told one thing and then be told another thing and now to be told this other thing. So, so my new doctor is like, I'm upset about this too. So she explained to me that what she wants to do is I have to have another colonoscopy in a few weeks and she wants to get in there and see if she can see where he took the polyp out. If there's scar tissue and she can see where it is, she's going to cut a little bit around it. She's going to biopsy it and try to see if she can get to some healthy tissue. She's like, sometimes you can't see it, you know, so with your eyes. So, but she's like, I'm not going to, if it's concave, I'm not really going to do anything because I don't want to perforate the rectum. So, and she's like, it's a high traffic area, so it heals very slowly. Um, hopefully I'll be able to see. She's like, the worst case scenario is that it looks completely healed and I can't tell where he took the polyp off from. And then we have to wait for it to regrow so I can retake it out and retest it again. The good news is, is that she's, that because I have the MSH6 variant, she, even though the, she's like, whatever these genetic testing people have to do, she's like, I'm not taking a chance with your life. So I'm just going to assume that you have Lynch syndrome and I'm going to treat you like 
like as if you had Lynch syndrome and go by the protocol for somebody who had that. So every year you're going to get a colonoscopy and I'm going to be so on top of everything that even if a polyp grows there, it's going to be taken out before it can become cancerous. I can't tell you what a relief that is because this other doctor blew me off, told me one thing, scared the shit out of me, then told me another thing and then I was confused about it and then told and now this doctor is explaining it to me and she said you know what it's a really good thing that you ask so many questions I'm like really not all doctors like that some doctors find that really annoying she's like screw them please do yourself a favor okay if you really are not jiving with your doctor get another doctor look what happened to me I just found another doctor and and this doctor is taking care of me. I feel like I'm in good hands. I, uh, everything has been explained to me. She doesn't rush me out. She sat in there and explained to me and answered all of my questions. Okay. She is a really good doctor. Um, so I'm at the point now where, um, I kind of feel like I should take down my other videos. I, I want to leave them up so people can see what I've been through and how fucked up that is so they don't have to go through that but at the same time I apparently didn't have cancer I had precancerous cells that were really fucking ugly and over time could it turn into cancer the way that my doctor explained it to me it, the new doctor explained it to me is that colon cancer grows very slowly and so the polyp in me that I had removed was probably in there for eight or nine years which makes sense because that's kind of when these you know the bleeding started in my butt and some pain and then it just slowly got worse over time and then it was discharge and then it was you know mucus and then you know by this year it was just really heavy bleeding and you know it just progressed um, she said it takes a long time for it to go from high grade dysplasia to cancer. I'm going to go on her word. Okay. I can research it. Google's not my friend. It, it sent me into a tizzy. It's a really funky, ugly polyp is what she said. It's a really ugly polyp and we have to stay on top of it. Please go and get checked. I am really lucky. There are people out there and a lot of people, even in my comments, who are going through a very awful cancer struggle and and I feel like a sh I feel like shit that but I didn't know like I I didn't I'm was going by what this other doctor told me and I had um, a nurse uh, no not she wasn't a nurse there was someone who reached out to me on Instagram and explained to me and said that she reads pathology reports and explained that it would be um, that the pathology report when I read it she said it was in situ uh, like stage zero or something that it would never spread and and I that gave me relief. This doctor told me and said, okay, yeah, it's stage zero, but I got it just in time. Really fucking confused me again, because if you're getting something just in time, that doesn't mean, uh, like, you know, wait a year and we'll, if then nothing thing grows, we'll take it out and you have no, I have no, I'm okay, is what I'm saying, is that my symptoms from that polyp are gone, all right, and the, the bleeding and all the mucus and discharge were from that polyp, the funky polyp with the with the not cancerous cells but the funky precancerous cells has been taken out i never had cancer but if i didn't go to the doctor and get this figured out and blew this off for another eight years i could have had cancer right so it's important to follow up and trust your body and what your body's telling you now my doctor my new doctor is like look once you know if we go the next couple of years and you don't grow any more polyps and I, and I have to go by what your body's telling me so if your body is saying hey man I just you know messed up and grew that one funky polyp and I'm not growing any more polyps she's like then maybe we'll push it out to every two years get a colonoscopy but for right now I need to get in there and see what ha what he did and I ha and then we'll do follow up in a year she's like I hopefully you know 
there's not any other polyps in there that were missed, you know? So I feel like I'm in good hands. Meanwhile, I, I feel, she's like, you've been put on a roller coaster already with this last doctor. And so, and how fucked up is that? But like, like seriously, how fucked up is that? That you have a doctor telling you that you have colon cancer and then telling you, oh, but I took, you know, but it's stage zero. I got it just in time. And now I have getting all the whole, the, the, the fucking mind fuckery of all of that was fucked up. Nobody should do that to somebody, and especially not right before the holidays. Why would you fucking do that to somebody? And to ignore me and all this, I'm just really, I'm, I'm really pissed about it. Um, and, like, sometimes doctors suck, which is why you have to go and, and advocate for yourself and push for answers and go to different doctors until you find one that's on your level that you can talk to and that hears you and will t you feel like you're in good hands. If you don't feel like you're in good hands with your doctor, find another doctor. There's a billion doctors out there. Please don't settle for less because where I was right after Christmas or right before, I mean, right before Christmas to where I am now is a totally different, like the weight has been lifted off my shoulders. So I might take the other videos down because if people are finding those videos now, I don't want them to think that I have that. I, I mean, those are just from what my doctor, my other doctor had said. So here I am. The only thing now that I have to do is uh, take the Prilosec for three weeks see how I feel. She's like, don't take your vitamins until you do the Prilosec and see if, then start taking your vitamins and see if it starts causing symptoms. Still don't know why I was B12 deficient, but everything so far has come back negative. You know, she tested me for everything. And, uh, the SIBO testing, that's where I am. It could be SIBO, it could not. And I'll find out from there. I thank you everybody for, for coming along in this crazy roller coaster with me. It's been a nightmare. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start getting healthier. Um, I'm going to start working out again. I kind of stopped working out, uh, right before the holidays and, um, just rebuilding my gut, I guess. I don't know what, what the situation is and why I'm having such ex extreme bloating. I even showed the doc, my new doctor, the photo of my extreme. Let me see if I can find it on here so I can show you guys. Um, it's up on my Instagram. Uh, it's just crazy, right? It's just so effing crazy. I feel like I was. Like, why would you tell me that you cut on the other side of, that those cancer cells were on the other side of where you cut when that's not the case? You cut through, well, the, the, the high grade dysplasia. It's messed up. It's so messed up. Um, I'm looking for the photos. Okay. So... I want to show you. So my stomach goes from uh, do I have these photos in here still? Okay, I don't think I do. Um, I'll just show you the bloating, but my stomach is like just a little poochy, and it goes from that to can you see it this is a, a picture of some of the bloating go on this side can you see it better yeah it goes from relatively flat to that, okay, even though you can't really tell you, like, okay, um, not like 
flat washboard or anything. You know, I have a little belly, but not like that. Um, and to this. See? And I showed this to my doctor, and she was like, that's significant. <laughs> that's significant. Because I showed her my belly in the office. And I'm like, I want to show you what my belly looks like now. And she's like, okay. And let me show you what the bloating does. And she's like, wow, that's significant. So she's like, yeah, get the SIBO testing. And if it comes back negative, at least that's one thing we know. So that's where I'm at. Uh, I know this has been a long video. Thank you, everybody, for coming along on my journey. I don't want to be misleading in any way uh, about... I've been pretty honest and open about everything and raw and real uh, about all my symptoms and it just goes to show you that if you're really not on top of things um, you could be misdiagnosed or, or told like other stuff that's not even the case and I, I just feel lucky that I listen to my instincts along with all of you pushing me to get a second opinion because not only my instincts, it was also the backup of other people being like, yeah, you should get another opinion. Because maybe I wouldn't have. Maybe I would have just trusted this doctor because he's been a gastroenterologist for a very long time. And uh, maybe I wouldn't have got the the uh, second opinion. But oh man, I'm so, I'm so glad I did. I'm so glad I did. So that's where I'm at. I don't know what this channel is going to turn into now. <laughs> um, I guess me getting healthy. Um, Sharon getting healthy. Sharon, what happens with the SIBO testing? And just uh, bringing you along into the crazy <laughs> corner of my world. So thank you for being here. Please take care of yourself. If nothing else, I hope that this whole experience has has shown you through my own experience that not not all doctors are are great. <laughs> Some are are uh, you know not. <laughs> Please advocate for yourself. Please ask all the questions, and that comes from my doctor who said, "Good thing you ask all the you ask so many questions. Keep asking the questions. Keep standing up for yourself." get the answers. If you feel that something is not right with your body, please, please, please. If you feel, if you know deep down something's off, keep going and get a doctor that takes you seriously. You know, that doesn't blow you off and tell you one thing or you, or the other. And don't ignore your body either. Don't ignore this. Don't put it off. You know, I could have got this polyp taken out years ago, right? And if I would have done that, maybe I wouldn't have had all of these other symptoms that made my body like really uncomfortable. So uh, I will update about the SIBO. I will update about the colonoscopy is going to be probably in the beginning of March uh, because I'm teaching some classes at the end of February. Uh, the SIBO is going to be done on the 20th and that's where I'm at. So please take care of yourself. Be you know, be good to yourself and hang in there. Hang in there. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.